Thank you, everyone. I, I did have the pleasure of being in Melbourne yesterday. So I haven't prepared anything here for today, so I'll just do as normal and just speak from the heart, shall I? Because that's the position from which Australia has to come to get past this, what has been an intractable, incredibly horrible period in Australian history. Yesterday, a fired Bandesh, a refugee who has been detained for almost eight years, walked free. And I was there, he called me in the morning and said, I'm getting out. You've got to come, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go. It's been so long, it's been almost 10 years. And what struck me standing at the front of MITRE there, and looking at this great complex of wire and barbed wire and steel was that was just the simplicity of letting him out. And I was really struck by it. And we went uh, to, to get him a birthday cake and took him to a friend's house and sat for several hours and just uh, uh, talked it through. And, and I just kept saying to him, that's all it takes, Mahan. That's all it takes. It was just a thin metal gate and a key. And it swung open freely and they said there, on this side is a form of living hell that none of us, no Australian, would ever accept for ourselves. Never. No justification, no arguments, no politics, nothing. No Australian can say that given the same circumstances, I think this is acceptable. That has to be the key here. It's not acceptable for me, it's not acceptable for my children, it's not acceptable for my former colleague Les Murray. So how can it be acceptable for anyone? So it was so easy. But there's 500 others, at least, uh, who are still stuck in this living hell. And it is a living hell. I went to Port Moresby last year and I was struck in many ways by what I saw. And the reason I went was to try to come back and talk to broader Australia through a really powerful platform of sport that this country loves as part of my responsibility to say, this can't be what Australia is about. It can't be. And as I've said many times, I had the pleasure of pulling on the national team jersey. And the people I saw offshore in Port Moresby, who'd been for six years in the wire in Manus Island, and the stories I heard about the way they were treated, and the siege, and the deaths, and the suicides, and seeing people now here locked up in hotels in Australia, I can tell you this, that's not what I played for. That can't be what anyone who has represented this country in any field, I don't care what it is, well, let's just take sport. If, whether you're an Olympic medalist, or you're a Socceroo or a Matilda, or you're a Wallaby, whatever you are, you cannot tell me that we pulled on the jersey to play for a country that believes in locking up people for eight years who are innocent refugees. Now this is, in the vast preponderance and majority of ways, an extraordinary place. But this is a big challenge that we have to overcome. Not just to make us better, but actually to make us whole. Because this is a sore. It's a sore on us. And as I saw when I was helping Hakeem al -Arabi, it's a stain on our global reputation. I went to help him, he was a refugee of course, and 
I was asking other countries for help. Can you please come to court? Can you come and stand with us, with this young Bahraini refugee who's on a protection visa and help us put pressure on Thailand and Bahrain? And so many of them said to me, well, why should we? How can we? How can we stand shoulder to shoulder with you, with what you're doing to asylum seekers and refugees? And I would say to them this, and that's why I'm standing here. I said to them, just help us. Help us get this kid out. You know why? Because all of Australia, or the majority anyway, is fighting for a refugee kid. And we're doing the right thing. And if we get him out, we can use that to turn the tide. We can use that to say, every refugee is Hakeem. Every refugee is Les Murray. Every refugee is Hakeem. We get it, right? Australia. They're the same. Hakeem had the good fortune of coming by plane. The good fortune only. That's all that separates him and everyone on Nauru now, or Farhad Bandesh who walked free yesterday after eight years. That's all that separates them. Nothing else. And we felt so wonderful about helping this kid. It was brilliant what you did. Australia was magnificent, extraordinary. As we are, that's what we are. We're an incredible country. But this is not. This is wrong. And these people are the same as Hakeem. They deserve the same support. I want to congratulate all of you who have been working in this field for so very long. It has been a really, really horrible and tough road. And you are doing the right thing. I've seen the emotion. I've seen the toll on all of you. I've felt it. But I've seen, for all of you, been here for many, many years. Uh, the trauma of this situation, of this policy, is not just, people think it's just on the refugees. Actually, it goes way out into the community. I've met thousands of Australians who have felt so strongly and rightly about it. They've spent their last decade, 15, 20 years, helping individuals, helping groups, and really put their life aside. They put their life savings in, and they put their emotional well-being on the table. And they've paid a terrible toll for trying to bring this to an end. For every one of you has fought during that period of time. You have my thanks, you have my support, and you have my love. Because that is amazing. Because you're doing it for us. You're doing it for us. You're doing it for my children. Of course you're doing it for Farhead and Moz, and Beruz and Aziz, and Samad and Sanusi, and Mohammed, who's in the US now, and all my friends who I met in Port Moresby. But more than that, you're doing it for us as a country. Okay? And you've carried the toll for the vast majority of us, including me. There are many issues in Australia we need to solve. Okay, many. But this is a really important one, because this goes to the, the very essence of where we came from, what, what we did 230 years ago, where we are now, and how we see ourselves both here and in the world. So thank you. My message to Australia is, now it's time for us to carry some of that load. Okay? And for all of us who have a platform, in whatever respect we have, please, it's long overdue, but now is the time. Because people are walking free. And there's 500 still to go. There's 300 roughly offshore, and uh, in Nauru and Port Moresby, and there's, well, 195 would appear after yesterday who are locked up in hotels on Australian soil. Just finally, I want to give all my love and support to Moz and all of his friends in Mantra. 
and those in Kangaroo Point who haven't had an opportunity to visit, and I understand there's some families up in Darwin, because they saw their friend walk free yesterday. And I can't imagine how traumatic and horrible that must be. For every Australian, it's difficult to know. Yes, we spent several months in uh, our own incarceration. Several months. We're talking about eight years here. With guards. With wire. And do you know I called Moz yesterday on the phone when I was with Farhad after he had left. And you know what he did? What do you think he did? So we called Moz, who's in the mantra, great friend of Farhad. His friend had got out yesterday. They were together in Manus. They fought together for so many years publicly. They've been wonderful, brave voices, incredibly brave. They take immense risks, these people, to fight for the others. Immense risks. We've seen what happened with the Biloela family and others. Okay? That in itself is horrid. We got Moz on the phone, and do you know what he did? He stuck behind wire, 23 hours a day, his friends got out after eight years. What's the difference? Nothing. He cried with joy. He cried with joy. No jealousy, no ill feeling, no why not me. He was so joyous for his friend to get his freedom after all that time. I say to Australia, that's the people that we're talking about here. Okay, that's the level of human being that I know. That's my friends. These are extraordinary people. And they've gone through something here that we put them through that I am not confident I would have survived. <laughs> or many Australians. What I'm saying to you is they're incredibly strong people. They are brave and they are principled. And they are fighting. But they need us to come along with them. Many of us are doing our best. I'd like to see more Australians join us. Five walk free yesterday. There's 195 here and 300 offshore who need to get to New Zealand. There's 200 here roughly who need to be out in community. There's 800 at least others who are in community. I'll just make this final point. I said I didn't have a script. But 800 others came for medical treatment through legal cases. They're next to you. They're here. They're having a coffee here. They're walking the street. Their children are in school next to you. They're the same as the people that came on Medivac. You know what the difference is? One day, 24 hours. I spoke to a refugee in Port Moresby who told me what happened on Christmas Island. The arbitrary nature, the lack of reason. He came on a boat, he sat there. It was 80 people. They went into tents for the night. In the middle of the night, guards came to get some, take them for some screaming, screening, give them some clothes, and put them on a plane. Half three quarters of that load, some of this guy's friends, he was asleep in a bed. He was taken, and his friend next to him Stay. He got on a plane, went to Manus Island. His friend got on a Navy ship and went to Australia. That's what's ha that, that is what happened here. Okay, so for all Australians, the reason that I'm here is because there is no reason. Okay, there is no rationale here. The only right thing to do is to let people go now. Everyone, everyone in Mantra and Kangaroo Point is Farhad. Everyone offshore is Hakeem. All of them are human beings who have rights. They are refugees like my beloved colleague, Les Murray. We loved him. You must also give these people the same support. Let them go. Thank you.